Okay, let's dive into this soap opera starring Diddy and Cassie. It's like a plot from a dramatic TV show, but it's real life and it's messy. So sit tight because we're doubling down on all the details. First off, Diddy, the big shot music mogul, is in some serious hot water. His ex, Cassie, isn't just mad. She's lawyered up and coming at him with a lawsuit that's as heavy as a ton of bricks. The scene? New York City, where the drama is as thick as the city's famous pizza. Cassie's accusations are no joke. She's pointing fingers at Diddy for some really dark stuff. Think smuggling people. Yeah, you heard that right. And there's more. She's claiming Diddy pulled a home invasion on her back in 2018 and forced her into doing some things she didn't want to do. It's like a crime thriller, but unfortunately, it's her reality. Flashback to 2018. Cassie's had enough of Diddy's drama and is ready to bail. She thought they'd have a civil dinner and talk post-breakup stuff, but nope, Diddy had other plans. Cassie says he just stormed into her place, uninvited and unstoppable, despite her protests. Cassie's escape plan? She moved, cut ties with Diddy's company, Bad Boy, and was living on the edge. But there's more dirt in her lawsuit. She paints a picture of years filled with physical and emotional abuse during their time together. Now, let's rewind to 2005 when Cassie and Diddy's story began. Cassie's spilling all the tea now. She's talking about being fed drugs and alcohol by Diddy and carrying guns in her purse like she's in a spy movie. And it gets wilder. She claims Diddy made her hang out with male prostitutes regularly while he filmed it. It's like a twisted reality show with Diddy in the director's chair. But wait, there's more drama. Cassie dishes about the time when Diddy lost it over her thing with Kid C. He threatened to blow up Kid C's car. Talk about losing your cool. Cassie was scared out of her mind thinking Diddy might go off the deep end. Cassie's kept this horror show under wraps for years, but now she's stepping into the spotlight, ready to tell her story. She's not just speaking up for herself, but for other women in toxic relationships. It's like she's carrying the torch for those who have been silenced. On the flip side, Diddy's not taking this line down. He's swinging back with his lawyer. They're painting Cassie as a gold digger, trying to extort him for a whopping $30 million. They're tossing around words like blackmail and lies. Diddy's camp is framing the lawsuit as a smear campaign for cash. So far, it's all a murky sea of allegations. We're like detectives trying to piece together the truth. And here's where it gets more tangled. Remember those rumors about Diddy allegedly breaking Kim Porter's nose? That story's been floating around like a ghost. And let's not forget Gina B, another ex of Diddy. She did this tell-all interview with Tasha K, dishing her own story of rough times with Diddy, echoing the same kind of nightmare Cassie's describing. In all of this, we're left wondering, what's the real story? It's a tangled web of he said, she said. One thing's for sure though, the drama between Cassie and Diddy is thicker than a bowl of oatmeal and it's far from over. Cassie's taking the gloves off and accusing Diddy of some serious heinous acts. We're talking about stuff straight out of a horror movie. According to the paperwork filed in court, she's claiming that over a decade, Diddy treated her worse than a bad science experiment. She alleges she was sold to the highest bidder, exploited and even used before chemical experiments. It's like she's describing a villain from a superhero movie. But unfortunately, this is her reality. That's not all. She's also throwing in an accusation about Diddy making a threat against rapper Kid Cudi's car back in 2012. It seems like Diddy's alleged temper issues aren't a new thing. It's like he's got a switch and when it flips, watch out. Now, here's where it gets even heavier. Cassie's lawsuit isn't just a few pages of complaints. She's alleging a decade of suffering thanks to Diddy's actions. We're talking about a level of abuse that's even hard to wrap your head around. The New York Times reported that she's gunning for a $30 million lawsuit against Diddy. She's not just accusing him of a few bad deeds. She's accusing him of pretty much everything. It's like she's saying, if there's a bad thing, Diddy did it. On the flip side, Diddy's not just sitting back and taking it. His attorney, Ben Bratham, is coming out swinging. He's labeling Cassie's claims as baseless and outrageous. In his eyes, this isn't about seeking justice. It's about money. Brathman's spinning a tale of extortion, claiming Cassie's been dangling a $30 million carrot in front of Diddy. She's been threatening to spill all their dirty laundry in a tell-all book if Diddy doesn't cough up the cash. Brathman's basically painting Cassie as a master manipulator, trying to squeeze Diddy for every penny. This situation is complex, with serious accusations on one side and vehement denials on the other. It underscores the complicated and often hidden dynamics of relationships in the public eye, especially those involving powerful figures in the entertainment industry. But let's talk about Diddy's not so great rep. The guy's been a regular in the headlines and not always for the best reasons. There's talk of wild parties, claims of physical abuse, and now 
Carisha from the City Girls is out here making some eyebrow raising statements about golden showers. It's like controversy just keeps following Diddy everywhere he goes. Could it be that she's saying all this stuff just because Diddy's rolling in the money? But let's rewind to Diddy's music career. Last album, 2006, but who's counting? The music's cool, but Diddy's real game is being the business ninja. Signed with Epic Records, sure, but that's just a side hustle compared to his business ventures. It's like he's playing Monopoly with real building. Now, let's flash into the water gig, Aqua Hydrate. Diddy and Mark Wahlberg turned plain old H2O into a fitness accessory. This isn't your grandma's water. It's packed with electrolytes and has a pH level that screams, I'm healthy. Suddenly, everyone's sipping at the gym. Smelling like money, Diddy's got you. His fragrance line started with Unforgivable in 2006, and he didn't just stop there. He's got a scent for every occasion, from Unforgivable Woman to 3AM, all global hits. It's like he bottled success. And remember Biggie? Diddy's cashing in on his legacy with posthumous albums. Controversial? Maybe. Profitable? Absolutely. It's like finding treasure in your attic, but the treasure is platinum records. Fashion is another one of Diddy's playgrounds. His Sean John clothing line was more than just threads. It's a statement. Winning awards and staying cool since 1998, with everything from t-shirts to timeless classics. Let's talk booze. Diddy's into luxury drinking with Combs Wine and Spirits. Ciroc Vodka, a mere 50,000 cases a year before Diddy. After, a whopping 2 million. That's not growth, that's a rocket launch. Switching channels to Revolt TV, Diddy's media empire with a 50 million viewer reach. It's not just about music videos, it's about shaping entertainment. It's like he's got his own Hollywood. And films? Revolt Film Enterprise isn't playing around. They're in the big leagues, winning Oscars and getting nods at Cannes. Who knew Diddy was a movie buff? Education? Check. In 2016, Diddy opened a charter school in Harlem. Not a cash cow, but definitely a heart project. It's like he's giving out ladders for others to climb. Back to Beats with Bad Boy Entertainment, his 1993 label. It's a music factory, turning out hits and making bank with tours like Bad Boy Family Reunion Tour. Diddy the Philanthropist? Absolutely. The Combs Foundation is all about supporting future moguls and students. It's like he's planting money trees in the community. Music rights? Goldmine. Janice Combs Music Publishing controls over 1,500 songs. Need a Diddy tune for your movie? Get in line and bring your checkbook. Fashion Encore with Aniche and a partnership with Zach Posen's Empire, different threads and same Diddy magic, more money. And let's not forget the Blue Flame Agency, his marketing and advertising powerhouse. We're not talking about lemonade stands. This is big time, almost billionaire stuff. So what do you guys think? Is she just saying that for the money? Did you catch wind of the whole Kim Porter nose incident? How about Gina B's interview? Did you get a chance to see her side of the story? There's a ton to unpack here. Drop your thoughts in the comments and we'll dissect this more next time.